In previous tutorials, I demonstrated how you can wrap text around simple shapes like a circle by using the place on text command. However, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can wrap text around more complicated shapes such as a heart. And to show you what I mean, if I were to select both of these objects here and go to text and select put on path, you can see we don't get a very good outcome. We don't get to choose the placement of the text on the path. It just randomly chooses it and you can't choose a different start or end point for this text. So to get this result, what we're going to do is we're going to create separate paths for each half of the heart and then create separate lines of text for each path. So let me get started on that. I'm going to grab my selection tool and instead of placing the text directly on this path, I'm going to place it on a copy of the path. So I'm going to create a linked offset. I'm actually going to create an offset copy of the shape so I could place the text around the outside padding of the shape instead of placing it directly on top of the shape. So let me select this object and I will go to path and I will select linked offset and then I will go to my nodes tool and I will pull this node out to create a little bit of an offset and I will give this a different color just so I could differentiate it from the original shape. And I'll pull this out to about there. And now I'm going to convert this to a path by going to path object to path. And I want to apply a stroke to this. So let me grab my selection tool. I'm going to hold the shift key and I'm going to click the letter or the color blue just to apply a blue stroke. And then I'm going to remove the fill color. Now let me make that stroke a little smaller. I'm going to open up my fill and stroke menu by double clicking this stripe down here. I'll go to the stroke style tab and I'm just going to make that one. So the approach I'm going to use here is I'm going to break this up into separate pads and then place separate lines on each path. So let me select this object and I'm going to go to my nodes tool and I want to select this node right here and I want to break the path at that node. So I'll come up here to this icon that says break path at selected nodes when you hover your cursor over it and I'll click on that. And nothing visu visibly changes on your screen but the path has now been broken up into separate nodes as you can see there. And now I'll come down here and do the same thing. I want to break these paths up as well. So let me select those and I'm going to break those paths as well. And now I'm going to break apart the entire shape. So let me go back to my select tool. I will go to path and select break apart. And now I can just take this little piece down here and get rid of this. And if you can see now we have separate paths for each half of the shape. And what I'm going to do is create separate lines of text. One line of text going on this side and another line going on this side. So I have one line of text right now. I want to break this up into two. So let me duplicate this by pressing control D or command D if you're on Mac. And the way that I set this up is I had up until the word four going over here. And then after that, the right side begins. So I'm going to end the line of text after the word four. I'm going to grab my text tool. So now that I have my two separate lines of text, I'm going to take this line of text, hold shift, click on this left path, and then go to text and select put on path. Now we end up with this effect here, which is not what I'm going for. So I'm going to click off of that to deselect it. I'm going to select just the path. And now to place the text on the outside of the path rather than the inside, I'm going to reverse the direction of the path. So I will go to path and select, if I can find it, reverse. There it is. And now it's going to put it on the outside. So the problem I have now is I have to make this text a little bigger to fill in the rest of this empty space here. So let me grab my text tool and I'm going to triple click this text to select it. And I'm going to make the size of this a little bigger. I'm going to try something like 30, see how that looks. I'll increase that, maybe 34. Okay, 34 looks good. Whatever size you use, make a mental note what size that is, because we're going to use that same size for this text object here so that these two lines of text look consistent. So now that's done. And I'll come over here and do the same thing. I'll select this text object, hold shift, click on the path, and go to text and select put on path. Now I'm going to have to do the same thing here with the reversing of the paths. I'm going to select the path, just the path, and go to path and select reverse. And then I'll do the same thing over here. I'm going to grab my text tool, select all the text, and I want to make this the same size. I'll make this 34. And I'm going to change the spacing of this a little bit. I mentioned earlier that you can't really change the position of the text on the path. You can a little bit by adding spacing between the letters. So I'm going to place the cursor before the text and just press my space bar to add some space in there. And if you want to add some more space between individual letters, just move your cursor around with the arrows. If you place the cursor between two letters, you can hold the Alt key and use your left and right arrows to increase and decrease the spacing between the text. Or if you're using Mac like me, you can use the Option key. So I'm holding Option and then using my right arrow key to increase spacing between the letters and the left arrow key to decrease it. 
And once you're finished, you can grab your selection tool. If you don't want this ugly path sitting in your way, you can select the path and then turn off. We'll make sure you have it selected because it's going to select the text first. I'm going to hold the Alt key or the Option key and click again so that it grabs the path rather than the text itself. And you'll know you have the path selected when you see the colored stripe down there. And I'm going to turn off the visibility of that path by holding Shift and clicking the X, and now it's gone. And I'll do the same thing over here to this path. I will select it. Hold shift, click the X to turn off the visibility, and now the path is no longer visible. It's still there, it's just not visible. If you wanna see it at any point, you can just come up here to where it says view, go to display mode and choose outline overview, and you can see where that path is. Just make sure to go back to the normal view mode once you're done. So let me go to view, display mode, and choose normal, and there we go. If you found this lesson useful, then consider checking out my Inkscape Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Inkscape and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. Kind of like how I did in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. And best of all, there's no monthly membership fees. You just pay $17 one time and you're in for life. I'll have some information about that down below if you want to check that out. As always, thanks for watching.